Summary of Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood There are two main plots in the book. The first one is about Snowman's efforts to stay alive after a huge plague wipes out all of Earth's humans. It looks like only the genetically modified crackers, beings that are similar to humans but not the same, and Snowman himself are left, and he watches over the crackers while also trying to stay alive himself. The second plot is about Jimmy, who used to be Snowman's name before the plague. It shows how the crackers, the plague, and Snowman's life alone came to be. At the beginning of the book, Snowman is going about his daily life. He eats some of the food he's found and saved, hears sounds from the past, and talks to the crackers, who ask him to tell them stories from the past. Snowman makes up a story for them in which a character named Crake is their creator and god, and Oryx, a mystery woman who shows up in Snowman's hallucinations when he is feeling very lonely, is their caretaker and the creator of all living things. His childhood is shown to us in memories. A compound is a neighborhood built around a business where wealthy scientists and their families live. That's where he grew up. The colonies are separated from the plebeians, which are the places where everyone who doesn't work for a company has to live. Jimmy's dad and mom, Sharon, fight all the time. Like his father, his mother used to work for companies, but she quit because she didn't like how greedy and cruel corporations were to animals. She finally leaves, taking Killer, Jimmy's beloved pet dog. Killer is a raccoon, which is a genetic mix of a skunk and a raccoon. In a note, she says that her guilt could no longer take it. There is still Jimmy's father living with him in the buildings, and he lets Ramona, a friend with whom he has had an affair for many years, move in with them. Jimmy's only childhood friend is Crake, a strange young man who is good at science and finds it interesting that Jimmy doesn't like science, he's more of a words person than a numbers person. On Crake's stepfathers, called Uncle Pete, computer server, they play video games and watch violent or sexual videos for hours on end. One game they play is called Extinctathon, and it involves making a list of all the species that are no longer alive. The name Crake comes from the dead red-necked Crake. While watching child porn one day, Jimmy notices a little girl that interests him. He thinks that this girl will grow up to be Oryx. Jimmy and Crake go to different colleges. Crake goes to a well-known school for science, while Jimmy studies rhetoric and advertising techniques at a fallow arts school. When Jimmy finishes, he gets a job writing pamphlets for a company called Anuyu. He gets bored and unhappy at work, so he starts drinking a lot and becomes addicted to sex. He sees a news story one day about a sex scandal in San Francisco. It seems that some girls were being kept in the basements of rich men. He sees Oryx interviewing the girls with the camera. At this point, he also learns that his mother has died after being killed for treason by the compound's security forces. Crake shows up one day and asks him to go bar crawling in the plebeians. Crake gives Jimmy a shot before they leave to protect him from the diseases that live there. While they are out, Crake tells Jimmy about a job opening at the high class rejuvenescence complex, where he works as a manager. Jim agrees to do the job. He knows that this rejuvenescence compound has guns, food, and other goods and he needs to get back there because he is dying of hunger and has no way to protect himself from danger. He tells the crackers that he has to go see Crake, and they worry about his safety on the long trip. Snowman tells them he has to go on his own and packs up what he still has. Voices from his past and pictures of Oryx, whom he loved very much, are making him more and more upset. Pagoons, which are genetically modified pigs with human parts and brain tissue, are after him, making his trip hard. During one night of his three-day trip, he cuts his foot on a piece of glass and has to take care of an illness that is getting worse. He gets to the rejuvenescence property in the end and goes to Paradis, a dome in the middle of it. Through more flashbacks, we learn that Paradis is Crake's project and the one Jimmy is given when he gets to rejuvenescence. This is the second part of Crake's plan to end human pain. The first is a pill called Bliss Plus that boosts energy and desire to get rid of sexual anxiety. It is being tried on bad sex workers, and the results are good. The pill also has an unspecified birth control method built into it, 
so anyone who takes it is automatically sterile. Craig thinks that overpopulation is the main cause of all human pain and wants to stop it. Human eggs will be manipulated as part of the second part of the project. Jimmy is shown by Craig the products of this work, the Crackers, a group of genetically changed people. Their eyes are a bright green color, and they are perfect in every way. Plant and animal traits have been bred into them to make them strong and to make sure they don't breed often and don't feel lust, attachment, or sexual anxiety. Craig has also tried to make them interested in faith, art, and philosophy, but Snowman's later contacts with the Crackers show that this has mostly failed. There is a beautiful woman working for Craig called Oryx. Jimmy knows her from watching movies of her in the past. The Crackers look up to her and learn from her how to make fire and eat. She also gives Bliss Plus pills to people in whorehouses and sex clinics around the world who are willing to be test subjects. Oryx and Crake are sexually involved, and Jimmy can tell that Crake loves Oryx. However, Oryx doesn't feel emotionally connected to Crake, so she starts seeing Jimmy instead. Jimmy learns about her past and falls deeply in love with her. She has worked in many sex trades. He worries a lot that Craig knows about the affair, but Oryx says Craig is too smart and doesn't believe in jealousy to do something like that. She says a few times in a scary way that Jimmy needs to promise to look after the crackers if something comes up with her. Oryx leaves for pizza one day and doesn't come back. Jimmy has heard that there is a terrible plague going around the world. He gets a call from Oryx, who is crying and saying she's sorry. The plague was in the Bliss Plus pills she was giving out, and she didn't know it. Jimmy starts to understand what's going on. The Paradise Dome keeps him safe, but he has to kill the other workers because he thinks they will freak out and put him in danger. When Craig shows up outside the dome, he tells Jimmy to let him in. Jimmy reluctantly opens the door, and Craig tells him that the shot he got to go into the Plebelands has made him immune to getting sick. Oryx is asleep and lying on Craig's arm. He cuts Oryx's throat and tells Jimmy that he needs to take care of the crackers. Scared and shocked, Jimmy shoots Craig. Jimmy waits in the dome for weeks while the plague kills most of the people on Earth. He takes the crackers from paradise to the beach, where they now live, when the time comes. He hates Craig and doesn't want to carry out his evil plan, but he can't leave the crackers. As Snowman walks into the Paradise Dome, he walks over the bodies of Oryx and Craig. He gets the things he needs and does his best to treat his foot infection, which is getting worse. He makes his way back to the crackers, who are happy to see him. They also say they've seen other guys who look like Snowman. Hearing this shocks and thrills Snowman, and the next morning he walks along the shore to find these people. On the beach, he sees three people sitting around a fire, two guys and a woman. He doesn't know what will happen if he goes to talk to them. Will they be nice, or will they attack him? Are they going to kill him? Is he going to kill them? The book ends here, but it's still not clear what he chooses to do. About the author. Adwood was born in Canada as one of three children, Adwood has been interested in writing since she was a child. In 1961, she earned a degree from the University of Toronto in English, French, and philosophy. She got her master's degree at Harvard and then taught at a number of well-known universities in the US and Canada. Her first book, The Edible Woman, came out in 1969. Since then, she has written many more stories, poetry books, and non-fiction books. A lot of her books have been big hits, like The Handmaid's Tale, which won the first Arthur Clarke Award in 1987. She is still interested in feminist criticism, gender roles, the environment, and what it means to be Canadian. She is a well-known and respected author who continues to do well in both literary and business circles. HBO is making a miniseries based on the Matt Adam trilogy, which includes Oryx and Crake, The Year of the Flood, and Matt Adam. Adwood lives in Toronto with her husband and their daughter. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.